What's up, YouTube? Today we're going to be doing a video on the Plex Media Server. It's been a very highly requested video, and today we're going to show you how to install it using the TrueNOS Apps Catalog in Dockage, how to set up data sets with it, how to get your claim token, and how to get it up and running. So let's jump right in. Today we're going to have to do a couple things first. The first thing we want to do, no matter how we're installing it, is we want to make sure we have some data sets to hold our data. So I'm going to go over my configs. I'm going to add a data set, and Plex is going to want a few data sets. So because we need more than one, I'm going to create an over overarching folder called Plex with apps permissions. And then underneath Plex, I'm going to create a few more. So I'm going to add another data set here. The first one I want to do is my config, and this is going to hold all of my settings for Plex. After I do config, come over here, I'm going to do another one for my transcode. Oops. Cool. Try to pull this. All right, we're going to do another one here, add data set. I'm going to do it for my logs will be the last one. Okay, so now I've got these three subdirectories, configs, logs, and transcode. So go over to apps and discover apps and find Plex. Okay, we're going to click install. All right, my claim token this is the first thing it's asking me for. I'm gonna show you guys how to get this in a minute. I'm gonna skip this, that'll be a different part of the video. We're gonna leave everything else here the same. We're gonna scroll all the way down until I get to my storage configuration. So we're gonna have to make some changes here because we just added these volumes. So our data storage, this is going to be our host path for our media file. So tank media. This is what they consider quote unquote data inside of Plex. Now we're going to do our config storage, host path here, tank, configs, plex, config. That's our config storage. Uh, our log storage is going to be here. We just built that before, tank, configs, plex, logs. And our last one is for transcode storage. And as see here, you have the option for temporary directly on disk. So this is what I'd recommend you do. If you want to go to host path, you can. Now I set one up in host path in case you want to use it. I'm going to leave it temporary created directly on disk. Another note here, this is TrueNOS Community Edition. This is the RC of Fangtooth. You may not see these options, but you will in April. So if you're still on Electric Eel, uh, you can just go with your host path. If you have upgraded to the RC of Fangtooth, I would recommend leaving it here uh, either on the disk or on RAM. If you have a ton of RAM, I would do that. Uh, I do not have a ton of RAM because it's just a text box, so I'm going to do it on the disk, but either one of those is a better option than the host path of the IX volume. The temp FS file system here, this is the fastest one. This is the one that I'd recommend if you have the RAM for it. I'm going to leave it for disk because I do not. Uh, we're going to leave it like that. I'm going to scroll all the way down here. Everything is good. If you want to do transcode, you should have another box down here. It says pass through NVIDIA GPU, and you'll see your GPU listed here. You're going to want to check that box and hit install. Uh, if you have, if you don't see that box, but you do have an NVIDIA GPU, go to apps and go to your configuration settings, your advanced settings, and look for that bot that option. So from now, I can click install, and it'll install it just like it would. Uh, I'm going to stop here, and I'm going to actually go ahead and do this in Dockage. So let's come over here to Dockage. And I'm going to do a new stack. I'm going to compose a stack. I'm going to call this Plex, just like that. Uh, and now I'm going to copy and paste these, this Docker Compose file, which I will include in the video description. I've made some changes here. So here you can see it's Plex. All the ports are listed. And if you wonder where I'm getting this, this is coming from the actual PMS Docker image uh, directly from GitHub. So this is where I got that. You'll see the Docker Compose uh, Bridge YAML template. This is where it comes from. So this is where I got this template from. I'm going to come back over to Dockage. These are all the ports. I've added a TZ here. The Plex claim token you should add. I've added the advertise IP. This is for my TrueNAS box. I've added the UID and GID of the apps group uh, and added the host name Plex with these volume mounts. So mount tank configs Plex, mount tank configs Plex transcode, and mount tank media is the data folder. So from here, I'm going to launch directly into Plex. So let's deploy this. Okay, Plex is now up and running, and you're going to see it's starting, and it is healthy. So Plex runs on 32400. Three, so here we are. 
So now we have to have our Plex token in order to continue. So I'm going to show you go ahead and how to get one of those. You're going to want to go over to Plex.tv slash claim. Uh, and you can see that here in TrueNOS, when you come all the way back up for the claim token, this is where it'll tell you where to get it. It is HTTPS Plex.tv slash claim. This is where it comes from. So when we go there, we're going to want to come Plex.tv slash claim. You're going to want to sign up for an account. I'm going to click sign up with email and I'm going to go through the whole process. And when I have a claim token, I'm going to insert it and then sign in. Okay, I have gone to Plex.tv slash, Plex slash claim and entered my email address and signed up and I got a claim code. I put that claim code back in Dockage and then restarted the app. So now I can continue with email and I can log in with my email and password. So I'm going to do that and then come back after I've done that so you guys can't see my login information. Okay, I have logged in and now this is what I see in Plex the first time. You'll see that across the top I've enabled DRM bar. I am going to enable DRM and I'm going to click got it. And here's my Plex Pass, and you have the option to do all these things. I'm going to skip that, uh, and I'm going to add, give the server a friendly name. So I just called it Plex. I want to allow media outside my home. I'm going to hit Next, and then I'm going to hit Add Library here, Movies, uh huh, just like that. Browse for media folder. So in this case, it's going to be data, and then you can see here Movies, add that, add Library, and then we're going to add another library for TV shows. So TV shows. Uh huh. Click next. Browse for media. Remember, we mounted everything to the slash data. And here's TV. Good. Add library. Good stuff. Let's hit next. And then we're done. I'm just going to hit done. And these are all the pin sources. You guys can come in here and customize all these things. I'm going to get rid of the stupid bar. Finish setup. Cool. I don't want to worry about any of that. Save my choices. Okay, so now I'm on the dashboard for the first time. This is what shows up in Plex, and notice that even though I don't have any movies or TV shows, there's a ton of streaming things that are available for Plex right now. If I want to go to the movies and TV shows I have, you'll see that on the left bar, movies here, TV shows, they're all empty because there's nothing here. But Plex has the opportunity for live TV. You guys can do a watch list. There's a ton of things here in the more category here for discovery. Plex has got a ton of features. You're going to want to come up here to this little wrench and go through these settings one by one and just make sure everything here is good. Uh, remote access is, is flagged for me because I have not set up a port forward uh, anywhere in my router where I have no external access right now through a tunnel, so it's going to just kind of flag me a little bit. If you're going to use transcoding, you're going to want to come over here and adjust the transcoding settings. Uh, the Plex web settings, there's a whole lot of things you can just change here just to make it just a little bit easier for you. Uh, you're going to have an authorized devices list. You're going to have a ton of other options for webhooks and your streaming services you already have a bunch of things like that set up you can manage your library access and add friends there's a cool lot of options here i'm not going to worry about doing all that today if i'm going to say if you missed any of these steps previously you can go into the libraries and then you can manage and edit the libraries that you've already added in case you messed up that set uh, setting during setup um, there's a lot of cool things here there's a ton of plugins for plex go through these settings and just have uh, spend some time just kind of getting used to the system. But once you're there, I'm just going to click this home button again. It takes me right back to the dashboard, and here we are. You can do all these. There's also some options up here for trending uh, media, all the activity you have, um, and other options here to know about you. So, yeah, there's a lot of cool things here. Plex is a very, very fully featured media streaming platform, kind of different than MB or Jellyfin, which is really about your movies and media, although they have some options too. Plex is definitely the most highly developed of the three. So I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, please like and subscribe to the channel. If you have questions, please leave your comments below. Uh, go over to the wiki and check out the new Plex page that we built in case you need more instruction than was just in this video. And if you really want to support our channel, please buy me a coffee. Thank you guys so much. I will see you on the Discord.